in a world of complete darkness, we have light. <laughs> Boy, this is striking. Uh -huh. My name is Chris Koch, I'm the director of a short film called Her. Yep, and I'm his DP, so yeah, and I guess we're going to be talking about the anthem wide lighting units. And how we use them on the set of Her. Mm -hmm. so, um, so we got these lights from um, the anthem one team led by Justin Eugene Evans, and he was kind enough to talk with my producer, Brian. We got these lights, um, Thanks to some negotiating between my producer and Justin. He was kind enough to lend us three of them, and we used them on the set of Earth. Uh, we didn't use any other lights except the Anthem ones, and I think that was a plus side, because yeah. other lights would have been too cumbersome for um, what we were doing. I mean, me personally, they blew my expectations through the roof. I mean, like, surpassed them so much. Yeah, I agree um, with that. Uh, at first, you know, because at NYU we have the tried and true tungsten lights, you know, that they give us since our freshman year. So when I heard we were using, like, new lights, you know, new, brand new, like, technology, I was a bit, like, concerned. But then after we had, like, our initial hands on test with the creator of Anthem One, what's his name? Justin. Justin. Yes. You know, I, all those fears were, like, completely gone, you know, and that's why we actually planned all our lighting setups to incorporate all of the Anthem ones that we received. One of the things I like so much about them is just how lightweight they are. Um, not that they're lightweight light, but they are very easily carried. Um, this really helped on our set since we had a lot of moving parts and locations within a school. So um, we had to take these upstairs, down elevators. As you can see, they're very lightweight and easily carried around. You know, um, you just have to get someone else to carry the uh, power box. But these are so light and so easy to use. So that really helped moving um, for all the different setups we had for our shoot. To build off of that, um, it's really nice because I guess we'll get into like all the different lighting cards. Uh, there's different lighting cards that you can put. They're not actually like a light bulb. It's actually a like a card of an LED, very yeah. tiny LEDs. And there's different types of cards, such as daylight. I think like or tungsten interior, uh, interior, and then there's ultra bright. Also, uh, there's the green screen. The green screen, you know, one for green screen filming, and they like uh, the people at Anthem One actually went into the actual color science of the lights to like target certain. Uh, either skin tones, or if you're filming with a green screen, something that really make the green screen pop. Um, but for our shoot, we uh, settled to shoot with, since we had three units of Anthem 1, we settled with two daylight units and an ultra bright for backlighting. And because most of our scenes had motivated lighting from windows and daylight, we were able to really use these lights for pretty much every single setup that we wanted. And uh, not only are they lightweight, but they don't get hot at all. I remember when we were first pitched the Anthem One lights, they were what, like 400 watts? And yeah. they put out like the light capacity. 200 watts, I think. 200 watts, and they put out the light capacity of a 5K light or something like that. Mm -hmm. And when you like are told that after working with so many like big lights, like a 5K that needs to go to like a ballast, and then you have to make, make sure it's the only thing plugged into like a breaker board, you know, it's like kind of hard to believe. And it's really like, I remember when we were first shown it over like the FaceTime video, mm -hmm. it was like so hard to believe. I'm going to turn it on right now. It's like, um, oh, it's, uh, it's just impossible to comprehend how bright they are. Unless, it's something to behold. Unless you're actually here. It's like when you first turn it on and then you like, turn the dial up to go a little more, you're like, oh, wow, that's pretty bright. And then you turn it up, and it gets even brighter, and then brighter, and brighter. And it's uh, absolutely incredible. And then on top of that, like, while other 5K lights, you know, since they're very inefficient, they create a lot of heat. So they get really hot after using them for more than five minutes. And when you wrap one set and you're moving to the other one, you have to let them sit for so long. While with the Anthem ones, because most of the building is for uh, actually heat, getting rid of heat. So uh, 
they don't get hot at all. So if you need to make like a quick lighting adjustment on set, I can just tell my grip like, oh, just pan that light down really quickly, and he'll just take his hands, you know, go boom, like point it down or up or whatever we need. Or we just need someone to Hollywood a light and just hold it with their hands. They can just go, all right, you know, let's just roll, you know, and then they just hold it for when we're done with the tape. It doesn't get hot or anything, and it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> Really mean. Yeah, that was um, that was really helpful. We have a clip here of um, our hallway scene where you can see uh, we have someone holding the light and following back with our lead actor, and you know it, it's really easy to hold. And then if you don't want to hold it with both hands, uh, and from one is kind enough to provide the handle, a handle. And then this just screws onto the bottom of the M1. Yep. So. And so you, you can uh, strike in. So, yeah, this is the handle. This also can be put into a C stand. Uh, you know, very useful. Uh, I will say the one like minor annoyance that I had with the M1 is that the, the length of the cable to the ballast was pretty short. Um, so you can dip it a little. Uh, so um, this was a little shorter. I don't know if they make them in longer, but it's like uh, if we put this on like a seven foot stand, uh, this cable was uh, kind of limiting in the fact that we had to put the ballast right under that stand in order to make it reach. Not a huge deal, but uh, I think it is worth noting. Especially how heavy the adapter can kind of be. This one, yeah, um, but uh, yeah, so that's like my only like small complaint. I would say the other thing too uh, that's very useful about the lights is all the adapters for the front of it is magnetic. Could you get the other for now one? Sure, please. Uh, so we have this one, do you have the other ones? The, I have, um, I have this as well. Oh, great. So, uh, all the Anthem ones, you know, they actually have, I don't know if we can, we can showcase this, but uh, it's spread is pretty much, as soon as it exits the light, it goes like this way, like boom, that's like uh, 170 degrees, almost 180 degrees, which is extremely useful for uh, if you want to diffuse the light. Apparently, you know, in order to diffuse the light, you only need to put uh, the silk um, like, what, less than half a foot away. It's amazing. And then if you ever want to gel the light, the light part itself is actually uh, super tiny. So you can actually take a piece of you know, colored gel, cut it out to like the size of this little frame, and then everything is magnetized. So it all just snaps in easily. It comes off just as easily as well. Exactly, which makes it really useful. Um, because Anthem 1s are so wide, it can be sometimes difficult to direct the light in like a very narrow way. Uh, which isn't a bad thing, it's just like a, you know, it's great to have a lot of light. So they actually have these uh, magnetic Fresnel lenses um, that can just go And like, you know, there you have it. Now it's a little uh, more focused. And then if you want to get even more Focusing, you can have uh, this adapter here. Do you have the other? Let me see what else I have. I have the regular one. Oh, I brought the. Um... Yeah, it's in there. We brought the thing right here. Yeah. All right. I brought the. This is a for now. Yeah. All right. Okay, so this doesn't come with the Anthem one, but it's easily bought on B and H. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. this is like something you put on a. I think it's like a photography light or something like that. Oh uh, yeah. There's another thing. So the Anthem one is technically. A utility light, so it can be used for multiple functions besides film. This is why it can adapt to things like that, um, that other Fresno unit, because that was made for utility lights because it has a near universal mount. Here you go. Boom. There you go. Now, you can't really see it, but there you go. It's like even more spotted, which is extremely useful uh, for controlling the light. Um, However, there is like one other minor thing that annoys me about the Anthem ones uh, is that since it's so wide, and I believe like they're trying to disperse heat as much as possible, 
Um, you see like these little slits on the side, which like I, you know, like I said is for dispersing heat, but it's actually um, sometimes difficult because I, I think it would be solved if you had black wrap on set to wrap the lights, but striking it, um, you can actually see um, it casts like this little line here out of the sides, which can sometimes be unwanted, but then again, like I said, this would be easily fixed if we uh, black wrapped it, so. Uh, yeah, uh, and then, actually, there we go. This actually brings me to uh, my next favorite feature about the Anthem Ones, which is uh, this ballast, or the adapter. Um, yeah, so uh, probably one of my favorite features about Anthem One is the ability for foot this dimmer on the back, actually. So, the light goes, you know, in here to here, and then it gets power up here. And then it's really nice because this usually sits below the light, and if I want to make a small lighting adjustment, I can take my foot and actually run it across this little dimmer here. And it's really useful because I can have the camera in my hands and my foot here, or I can tell my grip to make the slight adjustments while having his hand and be able to pan the light at the same time, just from this little uh, foot dial here. Um, my only main issue uh, with the lights is that this dimmer is actually pretty sensitive when you turn it on and off. So you press it in to turn it to toggle on and off, and unfortunately it's pretty sensitive. Um, it's like you can actually, you know, if you take your foot, you can actually double tap it by accident and like the light will stay off because it's like double tapped. So we don't know if it's on or off and it's like sometimes leads to complications and I think in the next version of the Anthem One, if this thing can make more of a like a like locking sound effect or like something like that, where it's like uh, you know, it's like much more of a release to it, um, it would be like fantastic. So yeah, but besides that, like the ability to make lighting changes with my foot, you know, if it was on another NYU set, you know, we would use hand dimmers or something like that, where someone would actually have to go down, you know, to the ground, you know, turn it, or if they want to save it all the way, they would have to go back up to the light and then turn it off. And it just, uh, it's something that I would have to ask someone else to do. And it just gets more and more complicated, the more people and the more time it takes. So, yeah. Yeah, and then, um, also, you know, these, we can't stress enough, these lights, um, they don't get hot at all. We had a fantasy sequence in our film where um, we had these lights very close to a plastic curtain that hung down from the ceiling. And, um, you know, normal lights would have gotten really hot and would have been a fire hatch, but not the anthem ones. <laughs> they just, they really, um, they really work in terms of, you know, placing them close to materials that could possibly catch fire, but they just, they didn't, because the Anthem 1 is built to uh, lose its heat. We wrapped early, actually, both days. Yeah, uh, yeah, we did. Um, so the first day we got in an extra scene, because we wrapped two hours early, so we snuck one in, and then the next day uh, we wrapped early again, so we um, had to have, we were able to have a little wrap party that we hadn't planned on. Um, <laughs> And, you know, that was highly due to the Anthem 1s and how easily transported and hand, uh, the ability to handle them was. Yeah. Nice. So, um, alrighty, now I want to bring in my producer, Brian, and he's going to talk about the Anthem 1 team and how nice they were to work with. I'm going to lean slightly different. Okay, uh, hi, uh, my name is Brian. I was a uh, producer on Earth. And, um, yeah, basically, I would really like to thank uh, the Anthem 1 team for kind of their dedication to um, film and, and uh, independent or emerging filmmakers. Um, I found out about Anthem through, uh, the team has recently been doing a lot of um, school visits to colleges and universities with film programs, and how I found out was Justin came to visit my sophomore year filmmaking class here at NYU, which he was an alumni from. And he was, uh, you know, super great and nice, and he told us a bunch of stories about how he built the company, but he was also very kind enough to extend the offer to allow students that needed uh, the lights on uh, junior year or senior produ year productions 
um, the use of the F1 units and given what uh, Tammy and Chris have said earlier and given the needs of our shoot, I believe that that was the best step. So I took the steps, you know, I sent an email, I made a phone call and, you know, Justin was super accommodating, um, you know, along the way he was very responsive to every email when we had to deal with faculty about bringing in this outside equipment because Anthem 1, unfortunately, is not in a lot of rental houses yet, I believe. No, no, this is, this, oh, we forgot to mention, but this is demo unit stuff, so yeah, yeah. these lights are up and coming, so right, and look out for them. Right, the only other people I believe to have gotten these units were like the crew of The Punisher on Netflix and then some other productions. Something like that. And I believe Disneyland kind of uses them for a, a net comic crafting. So we are actually the first, uh, I guess, independent or student crew to yes. utilize these lights. <laughs> and um, I, I could not be more pleased with them or more pleased with my interactions um, with the Anthem 1 team. When I do my junior year thesis, I'm going to be sure to contact them again because this was nothing if not a pleasant experience. Nice. So now we're going to show you um, just how powerful the Anthem 1s are. We're going to do a little demo for you. So stay tuned. So we're back. And as you might be able to tell, I'm being lit by the end of one. I mean, this all the lights in the room are out, but the end of one's still going. <laughs> what uh, settings are you shooting at, man? Uh, what f stop? 640? No, 4.5, 4.5. And what shutter speed? Uh, 640. Uh, 640 shutter speed. All right, well, this is full blend. As you can see, um, uh, can you pan to the edges of the lights, like where the left or yeah, go left. You see, it's all bright, it's all bright, it's all bright, and like there's the edge of the light, and then you go all the way to the right, you know, all right, all right. Um, well, there, I can see it more clearly here, but like on the, on the left, I think it was blocking a little. But yeah, that's the edge of the light. Yeah, but like that's it is. If you like film this thing here, right here, but right below the light, like it is like a plane of light. It's like a 180. It's insane. Uh -huh. yeah, it's it's good for uh, dramatic monologue. As you can see, Chris is getting a nicely defined silhouette. Exactly. And if there's no like, double shadowing or anything like that, it's nice absolutely amazing. It's, it's very um, crisp and well defined. So I'm going to put on the Fresnel lens now, the magnetic Fresnel. Um, and now you can see it's a little bit more spotted. It's not as, it has like a nice good fall off to the edges of it, um, which is extremely useful if you want to begin shaping the light. Um, I'm going to put on the Fresnel mount. And uh, this is much, even much more spotted. Mm -hmm. uh, Very film on the last. Exactly. Very bright in my face. <laughs> like, uh, if you come to me, Brian, if you can't to me, like, do you see it all right? Like, it is all just being carried in my yeah. hands, you know, this isn't going to burn me or anything. Yeah, no, legitimately, put yeah. Put my face right next to it, you know? Yeah. It, I, it feels, like, 100% cold. Mm -hmm. It's like nothing. Yeah. It's actually blowing cold air. <laughs> yeah, there's actually, yeah, there's actually fans inside, but they're so silent that, like, Right. Yeah. They won't be caught on with any lights. Alright, the Anthem ones have uh, what is this, like standard photography screw mount. Um, which actually the hardest part, at least for shooting with it, was because uh, NYU is so used to shooting with the uh, standard, uh, I don't know what the name is, like the standard uh, 750 mounts. Um, you should cut that out, that's probably wrong. But, uh, they, uh, none of the MRU stuff actually adapts to uh, the standard photographer's standard, like, you know, very lightweight screw. So uh, we actually had to go out and buy adapters um, uh, from Amazon to uh, work with our lighting stands. But that wasn't too bad, but yeah, mm -hmm. just something to note, I guess. Yeah, um, they're only like 20 bucks. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, if I had it my way, I would love to like shoot with pistol grips. Uh, with little grips that you can put into the C-stand here. 
because that would just make it even faster. You can put it to a C-stand, you know, when you need it there, and let's say you want someone to just quickly hold it up, they can just quickly release it, you know, and then they have, like, a pistol gripped mm -hmm. Anthem 1. That'd be great. Be great. Uh, yeah, uh, for our one hallway scene, so you're putting the pistol grip back on right now. Yeah, exactly. In order to have like a backlight on our character at all times, we actually uh, had someone just hold this up behind the actor and walk with them. Uh, or if they wanted to just do a fill light over the actor, you just go like this, boom, off the ceiling. Mm -hmm. uh, which I guess, you know, it's actually yeah, really amazing that uh, that worked for uh, a lot of our lighting setups. We actually, uh, what we use a lot for our lighting setups would, we have the ultra bright as the backlight, and then we'd have uh, either a direct key, or you know, we'd do two bounces for our key and our fill. So we'd bounce Anthem 1 in the corner of a room, and then use that as the key light, and then we'd bounce another Anthem 1 on the ceiling, and use that as a fill light. So, uh, yeah. Amazing. I mean, I guess to, to summarize, um, the Anthem 1 is an incredibly versatile tool for multitudes of uses for lighting, but works especially well for film because that was what it was originally designed for, was like any great innovation to combat outdated or non-consumer focused uh, products that didn't take into account certain needs of its users. and. Um, as you can see, the, the amount of time and innovation that the R&D team has put into building the Anthem clearly pays off such that it's able to greatly impact a crew of any size from a small student crew to a large major motion picture production. So, I just turned on the lights and um, first thing I noticed was a, um, like a sort of flicker from these fluorescent lights. Um, so let me ask Timmy like what he thinks about how right. like non flickery. Anthem is flicker free with <laughs> Yeah, that's true. So we were shooting in a school mm -hmm. uh, shooting in a school with fluorescent lights and we didn't have any sixty frames per second scenes. So we were just needing to make sure that um, both the fluorescent lights and the anthem ones didn't flicker and luckily um, we didn't have any problem with the anthem ones with it because of I think the refresh rate is so high, but we actually at certain shutter speeds we actually had issues with the standard fluorescent lights in the school. So we actually had to shoot at a different shutter speed. Um, so with Anthem ones, no problem. But other lights, you know, you have to be out, watch out for that slow motion stuff. Alright, well I guess we'll dim it all down to zero. So you can see just the range of dimming. There's no skips or anything, it's incredible. Here we go. Dimming down. There we go. Look at that. There we go. 